welcome to The Agenda. I'm your host, Kerwin Gaines. This week, we have the distinguished honor to have uh, our Attorney General, excuse me, Ms. Kathleen Jennings uh, here on the show. Uh, welcome, Attorney General Jennings. Thank you, Kerwin. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here this evening. We appreciate you being on the show. This is your, your first week here on The Agenda. We hope it's definitely not the last. And there's been so many topics that we wish we could have run by you, but this one has really come to light, and that's dealing with Roe v. Wade. And I know that I, I, I can only assume that your phones in your offices have been uh, burning up this week with what are we going to do type questions, and, and I'm, we just want to get the information out to Delawareans and have them understand where we stand as a state in regards to the legalities. Kerwin, uh, first of all, thank you so much for bringing up this topic, and that is uh, what happens with Roe v. Wade and what does it mean for citizens in the state of Delaware. The good news is that if Roe v. Wade is overturned by the Supreme Court, as we imagine it likely will be, given the draft opinion that everyone has seen, then there will no longer be a constitutional right to abortion in our country. Delaware, however, has really stepped up to the plate. Uh, the legislature, our office, the attorney general's office, and everyone else in the system has stepped up to the plate uh, first in 2017 by making Roe v. Wade the law of the state of Delaware. And so Delawareans are protected just like they would have been with the constitutional provision, the constitutional right in place. That means these Delawareans have the right to a safe and lawful abortion, just like they had under Roe v. Wade. And that's thanks to a legislature that thought, you know, someday, the, Del the U.S. Supreme Court would overturn the decision, and we want to make sure that women in this state are fully protected under the law. I've, I've read several articles so far, and it talked about uh, a little bit of what you were saying, is that our legislature kind of almost saw this coming uh, and jumped ahead of it and put those uh, protections in place for, for women that are, are making that choice. Um, when that happens, uh, what, what other protections can we provide for people that are coming for abortions that are not Delaware residents? I've seen some very scary things from other states that are trying to really turn this into, they can be actually charged with murder uh, if they come to another state, regardless of them actually being in that state. That's a really good question, Kerwin. People who come to our state would have the protections that our state law provides to Delawareans. And so if people come to the state of Delaware to uh, access abortion services, then they would have the same protections that any Delaware citizen would have under the law. And I want to add that Delaware has not just made Roe v. Wade the law of our state to protect women. We have recently gone through other um, legislative efforts successfully to further protect women. Since 2017, when the law was passed, making Roe v. Wade the law of the land in Delaware, we have worked with our legislature to actually remove from the books the crime of abortion. That and and is, I just want to, I want to make sure I heard that right. You said the crime of abortion. That's exactly right. So prior to Roe v. Wade, which became a constitutional right in 1973, almost 50 years ago, prior to that, Delaware had a law on its books that said that abortion is a crime. That law was never removed by the legislature until 2021 when we all worked together to get it off our books so it is no longer a crime. That's different from so many other states in our country. Fully 26 states have either enacted new laws that go into effect the day that Roe v. Wade is overturned that criminalize abortion 
and 13 other states already have abortion as a crime as as a crime pre Roe v. Wade. So as soon as Roe v. Wade is deemed uh, not a constitutional right anymore, then those laws go into effect in, I believe, in total 26 states that will make abortion a crime. Not in Delaware because we removed it in 2021. It is not a crime in the state of Delaware. We also um, worked really hard with the legislature and with women's advocacy groups and those who provide health care to women in this circumstance. We worked really hard to increase the availability of medication-assisted abortions in Delaware as well. So, so those changes were really important. I have to tell you, Kerwin, back in 2017, when the legislature was planning to enact that law protecting a woman's right to abortion in Delaware, there were so many people who said, why are you doing that? Because it's a constitutional right. But guess what? We are really, really fortunate that our legislature acted. Now, I have to play uh, conspiracy theorist or devil's advocate or, or whatever the position is that I need to play today. Are these things in concrete, right? So is this going to change once an administration changes? Are they going to bring this back up? Is it going to go to the ballot again? Or do you foresee that this is beyond being a partisan issue? This is a human rights issue, and it's hopefully here to stay. It is a fundamental human rights issue, and Delaware protects it fully. There is reason, I believe, to consider whether the right to abortion should be made part of Delaware's constitution. So that, as you say, Kerwin, when there's a new administration, legislators change, attorneys general change, um, that it would be enshrined not only in our law, but in our constitution, which would further protect Delawareans. It is so vitally important that we pay attention to what's going on in our state and across our country to make sure that women here in Delaware are fully protected. So uh, this is just your opinion, uh, definitely not a fact coming from the AG, but do you see any type of, um, in, in getting these laws taken care of, partisan, partisan? you know what I mean? It, is, are we seeing more of the left or the right? Um, pushing one way or the other, or, or, we are, or, or are we in an accord when it comes to this? Unfortunately, Kerwin, it's become a partisan issue, and there's a real partisan di divide. Democrats overwhelmingly in elected office support the right of a woman to have an abortion under Roe v. Wade and all the other opinions that have come out. We support a woman's right to choose. Republicans have pretty much divided along partisan lines. And there are many, many Republicans running for office who do not support a woman's right to choose and would not protect that right under Delaware law. And so it shouldn't be a partisan issue when Delaware, that when Planned Parenthood of Delaware first came into being decades and decades ago, the Delaware chapter of Planned Parenthood was led by Republicans and Democrats. And it, it was led by people who really wanted to devote their lives to making sure that women were protected, most especially poor women. What what we know as a fact in our country is that most women who have abortions already have families. They already have children. And many of those women cannot afford to have another child because it will impoverish everyone in their family. And so back then when Planned Parenthood Delaware was formed, the thinking was, and rightfully so, that we want to lift women out of poverty. And we can only do that if women have the right to plan their own futures, their own family, and their own bodies. So with that in mind, would you foresee Delaware becoming a safe haven, so to speak, for those that are trying to obtain an abortion and they reside in a state that 
um, is not allowing for it to occur. Do you see our, our, our doors wide open and people just coming in and, and us being the protector for some? I do. I certainly think that people who live in a state that outlaws abortion will want to seek out access to those health services in states that maintain the protection of Roe v. Wade in their state and, and the freedom of a woman to choose. They will come to healthcare centers in the state of Delaware to receive those services that are denied to them in other states. And what really concerns me is that there are people who have the means to, to travel long distances to receive an abortion, but there are also women who can't. Uh, think about someone in the state of Texas right now, um, and they may have to travel over a thousand miles to access that health service. That's just not right. Yeah. So we have other municipalities, uh, as, as you know, and has been in the paper uh, throughout the year is Seaford, Delaware. They have had, they were reluctant to accept Planned Parenthood into the neighborhood and they worked very hard to make it difficult for um, these procedures to occur. Do we foresee this popping up again with other municipalities here in the state and this, this pushback or, or do you think it's just gonna be accepted? Well, um, it certainly could pop up. And right now uh, we have, we have meaning the attorney general and our office has sued the city of Seaford because when Planned Parenthood was opening their first ever clinic in Seaford, that town passed a law that said that fetal remains had to be buried and they had to be buried um, at the expense of the, the mother, the patient seeking um, that healthcare service. That directly violates Delaware law. And uh, so we did what was the right thing to do. Um, we brought them to court. That case is pending right now in court um, to say, you cannot pass a law in Seaford that is different from the law of the state of Delaware. And so if other municipalities attempt or do pass laws that are illegal under our state protections, then we will not hesitate to take action to protect women in our state. Well, that's good that people have that assurance. And, and, and it's important that we, we state that um, the Supreme Court document, the opinion was leaked. It is not official law yet and it is being reviewed. And what, we, what was leaked may not be um, what will actually become law, uh, but again, your assurance that it, it, we, we will be safe in Delaware. You can take it to the bank, Kerwin. We are, we are safe in Delaware, and as long as I am attorney general, and as long as we have the, the fantastic legislature we have here, um, we will all work together to ensure that women have that right to choose and that women can determine their own futures and how their body um, should, should um, no one else should determine, you know, how we control our own bodies. So who should, if, if someone were to have questions and we try to be as informative as we possibly can here on the agenda for uh, all constituents, who should someone reach out to? Is there is it your office um, that's set up if they, if they were to have questions in regards to the legalities of this procedure or should they work directly with their health care provider or, or what would their next steps be? They should first work with their health care provider and they can always call Planned Parenthood of Delaware. They're available um, to provide advice on the individual situation the caller may find themselves in. They know what the law is here in Delaware. We work together with them um, all of the time. And so I think that the first step would be your healthcare provider and um, a great resources, Planned Parenthood of Delaware. Yeah, I think, I think that's great. Um, quick question for you. We had the opportunity to speak with Ms. Julianne Murray uh, earlier this spring, I believe, and she will be running against you for attorney general. Um, she gave some great points, but I didn't think it was fair because we didn't have an opportunity to speak with you. 
and I think you are your best uh, campaign person. So <laughs> please tell us, uh, you do intend on running again, of course, and what do you foresee in the future for the state of Delaware as you as Attorney General? Sure, and thanks for the question. I, I think I have the best job in the world each and every day as Attorney General. I wake up and I get to help people in the state of Delaware. It's a job for a lawyer um, where you can, you can just help people in a variety of different ways. And I'm really proud of the record of our team in the Department of Justice and, and my record in terms of helping, um, helping people. So uh, we have time and time again delivered real and measurable change for people in this state. We have made actual progress at a time when making progress is incredibly difficult. And the issues we've had to contend with are hard ones. When the people of Delaware have been wronged, I have gone to the map for them. No matter how rich, how powerful, or how connected the perpetrators of those wrongs may be, I have said it before and I will say it again. No one is above the law and no one is beneath justice. Whether it's a group of politicians seeking to disenfranchise 80,000 Delaware votes, a case I argued myself in front of the Court of Chancery to save those votes in 2020, or large prescription drug company executives overwhelming our smallest towns with opioids and I went to battle and achieved a settlement that we believe will bring into the state of Delaware over a hundred million dollars for treatment. Or whether it is a historic chemical company responsible for dangerous chemicals contaminating our water supply. Again and again, I have fought for people in this state and I have won, and that is what we will continue to do. Public safety is a high priority in my administration. We have outstanding prosecutors who each and every day prosecute violent crimes to keep people safe. That is something that will continue when, hopefully, I am reelected. And uh, we have been laser beam focused in particular on guns and gun violence. We got the bail law changed to make sure that truly dangerous people were not let out on bail prior to trial. We will continue to work with our police agencies throughout the state on gun prosecutions in particular, because having a gun in the hands of someone who is, who is violent is not something we will tolerate in this state. And we will continue to work to protect Delawareans' civil rights, and their constitutional rights whenever they are under threat. Let DART do the driving. DART First State provides transportation that is clean, safe, reliable, and affordable. Plan your trip and get real-time bus information with the free DART Transit app. Scan your phone to pay your fare with the free DART Pass app. So what are you waiting for? Try transit today. Visit dartfirststate.com or call 1-800-652-DART. Well, I can honestly say as, as a news person, I'm, I'm reading papers every day. I'm reading uh, things online and I can see that you are out there stomping, trying to get things done for us. Uh, but there's one question that I asked Ms. Murray that I'll ask you, and it would only be fair, is that we have some very tough areas uh, throughout our state. One of them we already mentioned was Seaford. We have Dover. We have Wilmington that are really peaking in regards to crime issues. And there are, it, it, I made it very clear to her, just because those areas are there, that, that doesn't mean that everyone's bad, right? So there are people there that are having, I guess, difficulties leaving their home, uh, especially here in some areas in Wilmington. Uh, after certain hours because they just don't feel comfortable and they don't feel like that they're they're being heard and I offered this question to Chief Tracy in Wilmington as well um, what would you tell them as they're home watching now what assurances would you give them that their concerns are being heard and there are action plans in place to assist them 
um, in, in their troubled neighborhoods? Sure, let's talk about Wilmington. Um, I live in the city of Wilmington. I grew up here. I love this city. I love each and every neighborhood. And I routinely am walking in neighborhoods and talking to people as is Chief Tracy. We are seeing across the country an unprecedented rise in gun violence. And so it's incumbent upon everyone in law enforcement, including my office, to be fully focused on reducing gun violence. We work every day with the Wilmington Police Department to focus on the, the most violent individuals among us. We are ensuring that those individuals, those people who resort to violence and in particular gun violence and who destroy uh, the safety of neighborhoods, that they're, they're not there that they are, they are arrested, they are put in jail, and they are detained. And when they are tried, they are given prison sentences that ensure they will not be out. That's really important um, when we talk about violent crime. And it takes the work of all of us. It takes work with um, our law enforcement partners, the Wilmington Police Department, and it takes work with our prosecutors in our office who are working really hard to keep us safe. Crime overall, Kerwin, in our state is going down and it has been going down. Violent crime overall in our state has been going down and continues to go down. There is one very important exception and that is gun crime and domestic violence. And so our team at the Department of Justice is focused on attacking both of those trends and making sure we have a safe neighborhoods where people can go outside, sit on their porches, watch their children play and not be in fear of being shot. That's just not okay. I will say that the police department and our office are making tremendous progress. In this year, we've seen a dramatic reduction in shootings and in homicides. And I'm gonna tell you, we may need to give this a few more months and a, you know, the summer months are coming and I'm not one to predict, but I can say that as a result of our hard work, especially on gun crimes and on the changes to bail, we have been able to reduce gun violence in our largest city. Well, I, I think it's great. Um, the one thing that I find interesting um, is that you you talked about the synergies you're having with law enforcement. And if you could talk a little bit more toward about that and how you're working in the community to ensure that these new programs and initiatives, and, and I know that Chief Tracy is working very hard at it as well, to, to ensure that these things are, are getting done. And then it, I, I don't wanna use the expression trickle down, but it, the people in the community are seeing this first and foremost. Sure, when it comes to gun violence, we need the community and us to all work together. And by us, I mean all of law enforcement. And we need to speak with one voice so that we can protect people who live in our cities. Um, and so as a result of that, in Delaware, in, in my office, we formed what's called the Community Engagement Unit. And we go out and walk and talk with um, people who live in some of our hardest hit neighborhoods all of the time and say, how do we help you? And we try to provide the services that people need. And we also um, listen. I think listening is one of the most important things that an elected official can do. And what I heard over and over again is that people feel like um, most especially young people, that they don't have a lot of options. And when schools were closed, they certainly did not have a lot of options. And so it's really important that all of the services available, most especially to our children, most especially to our young people, make a difference in their lives. For adults, we also know that, look, the, the economy is strong. Um, every employer is hiring. And we need to make sure that there's a good workforce, a good effort to create 
available jobs for people to fill. And so our office sponsored along with Amazon an expungement clinic, which for the first time would enable people with low level records who have not committed a recent crime to actually get their records expunged and get a meaningful job. Sometimes the only impediment to a good job is an old record. And that expungement clinic saw more than 300 people sign up to have their records expunged. And when I went there and met with people, there was a line out the door. So I know there's a real, really, that's a change that will make a difference. It's one change. And there have to be a lot of different changes working together. Each and every day, our prosecutors meet with the police to work on, in particular, gun crimes and gun violence. And once a month, the heads of the police agency, the U.S. Attorney's Office, the mayor, and I, and, and um, the federal ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Bureau, once a month, we all sit down and we review every gun case that we have in the city of Wilmington from arrest through to sentencing to make sure that at each step of the process, everybody is both accountable and doing their job to the best of their ability. It's a very, very successful program. It's working, it's reducing gun crimes, it's reducing gun violence. Attorney General Jennings, thank you so much. Uh, we could do this for another hour, I think, <laughs> but unfortunately we have to go. Again, thank you so much for joining us this week here on the agenda. Good luck in the election, and we look forward to seeing all of you next week right here on the agenda. Thank you, Kerwin. Thank you very much, and take care, everyone.